This is the Bison Coaches Corner. We're talking Bison men's basketball with head coach Dave Richman. The Bison off to a great start this year. It's been a long non-conference schedule. We're just getting started with conference play, and we welcome you to the set head coach, uh, Dave Richman. And congratulations on the start to the year, and give us a capsule of the non-conference schedule. You're all over the country. You got a lot of different experiences. You played a lot of different styles of teams, didn't you? Absolutely. Thanks, Jeremy. It's great to be back here, and it's a fun, exciting time of year. Uh, I think we were 11 and four, yeah. and coming out of the out of the non-conference, 10 and four, something like that. And you're right, especially in a mid-major program, uh, when you've had success, you're taking games anywhere and everywhere you can get them. Um, and, and pleased, uh, we, we phrased it a couple times as good, not great. Uh, you, you take some of those games without. We don't have much experience to start with, and, and Chris Cady misses the first couple. Corey Brown yeah. probably missed three, four, five games in there with some injuries and um, excited and encouraged with some of the things we've seen, especially from our youth. At the same time, we've got a long way to go in a very difficult Summit League. Well, last week you had two games. Uh, you lost both of them, a couple of close games. Uh, Thursday, we start with Omaha. It's a home game, 31 game home winning streak. Uh, the guys fought. It was, it was a wild game, very high scoring game, which probably wasn't to your liking, right? That's not the tempo you want. Yeah, Omaha, Darren's done a tremendous job there. This is their first year of postseason eligibility, and they're primed to, to really make a run. Very talented team offensively, and I think they're better defensively. And, and we, we didn't do a very good job, especially early in the game. We let them get comfortable. And when you let a team get comfortable, they see the ball go through the hoop uh, multiple times. It just feeds their confidence the rest of the game. Our guys did like they always do. They battled. We were down almost, to, I think we were down 20 in the first half. We competed. We got it to 10 single digits, but you could tell they had a bunch of seniors running around out there, and every time we made a run, you know, they had an answer to kind of quiet, quiet things, and uh, it just wasn't our night. A ton of credit to them, uh, but we've got to continue to get, get better. And then Saturday at Oral Roberts, Oral Roberts is always a tough place to play, and, and they'd coming off, they're 0-3 in the league, a team desperate for a, for a win. Yeah. They'd played the, the, the two prior without the preseason player of the year in, in Obi, and he came back against us. and. Um, you know, he wasn't great. We did, Corey Brown in particular, yeah. did a tremendous job on him. But you could just tell that, that their confidence grew having him back, and they understood better where uh, guys were going to be on the floor in certain situations. They only had nine turnovers. I think they had had 42 in the prior. Um, and it was a battle. And, and you, what we're frustrated with is you miss out on a, on a golden opportunity and you lose no. by one in a tough place to play. Uh, that being said, we've got to put those, those two games behind us and get ready for two tough ones here this week. Some good things happened to Earl Roberts, though. Dexter Werner, just 22 minutes. He had 19 and 10. You owned the glass, plus 9. You fought really hard, down about 10, cut it to 1, gave yourself a chance. Yeah, again, I, I think that's kind of been the story of, of our first 16, 17 games this year, Jeremy. And it, you expect it, but you just can't accept it with the young group that – with the with the NDSU that comes on the jersey that you're wearing, there's a big target on your back, and um, our, our guys understand that. Uh, they're they're slowly starting to understand it, but they've also got to understand that that means for 40 minutes. And early in the game, early in the season, you look at Montana, Montana State, even North Carolina A&T. It was the start games. I thought we were pretty locked in for the most part against Oral Roberts, except for to start the second half. And that that stretch where they gapped it to eight to ten was just you know too much for us to overcome. Again, some encouraging things. I thought Dexter had a slow start, didn't play his best game against Omaha, and we challenged him, and he responded very well. Uh, we, need, we need more balance. We need everybody just to raise their level of play a little bit more. You know, looking at the league, uh, what a great non-conference the league had. Uh, the RPI got up to as high as 11, I believe. There's two top 100s right now. It's a very balanced league this year, isn't it? There's two teams that don't have a loss yet, Omaha and IPFW. Yeah, I think when you go back to the year we beat Oklahoma in the, in the NCAA tournament two years ago, the RPI reached 12 at one point, something like that. Uh, this year, I believe, you know, I've seen some media reports and some tweets that we, we got as low as eight. And, and, and you can see it as you're watching teams, yeah. not only that you're preparing for, like a South Dakota this week, but who they're playing against. And um, that's fun and exciting as a coach. And uh, there are going to be some challenges, especially with the, with the young group that we have, absolutely. But that's why you come to NDSU to play great competition. Hey, this is a big week. Uh, two home games. Uh, USD comes in Wednesday. South Dakota State comes in Saturday. USD has an RPI of 154. They're 1-3 one in, in the league, so much like the Earl Roberts game, you're facing a team desperate for a win, but you're also desperate for a win. Yeah, absolutely. Like you talked about off-camera, they're all big. They're all yeah. big this time of year, and um, especially when you're at home trying to protect your home court. 
as much as it's about you know a big week because it's South Dakota, a big week because it's South Dakota State, it's a big week because it's about NDSU basketball. And it's early in the league, and, and is it desperation time when you're one and two? I, I don't think so. Uh, but what we need to lock in on and stay focused as a staff is keep getting this group better. And, and when that happens, and continue, who, who knows, but we need to continue to prepare ourselves for late February, early March. And I'd like to get the fans out to Shields Arena on Wednesday night. Uh, you know, I don't think we can look at the record of South Dakota and say this is an easy game. They're 1-3, and three, they're 9-9, nine and nine, but Craig Smith's a good coach. They do a good job. This is going to be a tough game. Absolutely. Hope the fans are back from Frisco yep. <laughs> and, and we can get them out. Shields has been a tremendous home yeah. for us. We have seven, uh, six games, uh, seven games left yeah. out there. Uh, after this week, it'll only only be five, and so I think we've got a talented group, and, and the the more support and encouragement that our Bison Nation fans can bring, that's always that was big big part of the home winning streak, and the, the, there's a lot of pride in that. But the enthusiasm that our fans bring and, and can get behind our guys, that's a big help to all of us. Guys fired up for these two games, though, and, and the attitude's great right now, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. I think there's disappointment, but hopefully, yeah. uh, you know that uh, adversity. You know, when you lose a couple, which we haven't done. You know, in a while, I don't think we lost back-to-back -back games last year. You're going to find out a lot about your group, and uh, hope, hopefully, you know, our seniors and, and our upperclassmen, and you know, you even you even look at an AJ Jacobson. He's only a sophomore, but can, we got to consider him an upperclassman. Those guys got to do a tremendous job of leading and just figuring out a way to to get wins this time of year. Best of luck to you, Coach. We really look forward to it. Thanks, Jeremy. All right, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, South Dakota is at Shields Arena. We'll have the Bison Radio Network fired up for you. Scotty Miller's back from Frisco. Uh, Saturday, SDSU is here as well. Television on Midco. It's a huge week. We will see you out at Shields Arena, and we'll recap it for you next week. Have a good one.